Our journey from Mexico to Canada, 44 days, 4,400 nautical miles. The footage I'm about to share, I'm leaving it pretty unedited, raw, so you can really hear the sounds of what it's like to be out there and to feel what I'm feeling too. My anxieties, my elation. If you're new here, my name's Kayleen and this is my Tartan 42. And my dad, Farrell and I are sailing my boat back to Canada. spot well it looks like we spot a, a lone commercial float <laughs> with a pile of growth on the bottom of it dark colored it's kind of neat because at first I thought it was going to be a seal head but <laughs> you don't see seals out here <laughs> like you are you have absolutely no choice yeah and to turn back is just as it's not really a well, even now, it's a two-week option. We will soon be, in one more week, we'll be at kind of a halfway point. Yeah. And there is no such thing as a turn our, our option is basically go to Hawaii. And really, that's, that's, that's I think that's still 1,800 miles yeah. away from us. Yeah. In which case, that's almost three weeks, two and a half weeks. Yeah, I definitely feel quite alone out here. But it's nice on days like this. Oh yeah, we're I certainly very pleased with the last week. Our conditions are pretty fabulous. A few bit of some light very winds. Very few frustrating moments, and as they were very short, where we had to turn the motor on, 
and we, we knew that would happen. Yeah. It's just we didn't want it to happen. It has been a very slow morning. The wind is very light. The high is moving in, I think, but we're still kind of creeping along here. And while it's calm, in case it does pick up, I'm going to do my daily deck walk and rig check. Check for anything odd, chafing, cotter pins. So let's go do it. I'm checking for chafing up here. The We've been getting a ton of water over the bow the last few days. The bow's been like digging in and unfortunately the windlass is letting a lot of water into the chain locker, but this chain locker here is separate and it seems to be draining well. This chain locker goes into the build and it's not draining. It unfortunately is letting a lot of water into the build, but that's Okay, the build is keeping up with it. Just found a broken piece of plastic, which looks like it's from a, looks like it's from a strap like that, not too sure. Oh, I know what it's from. The base of the staysail. And a loose, the spinnaker halyard is a little bit loose, so I tighten that up. Well, it's nice and calm. I'm gonna poke around the monitor, look to see if there's any chafe on those lines. We've had to install quite the system to keep the control lines on the wheel, which has been a big pain in the butt, but it's now been working flawlessly for a week. The first few days, the control lines kept popping off, which was really frustrating. Um, and I'll show you what we've done. on the sail. Just plugged in Starlink and it takes about 10 minutes to fire up out here. We have it, the RV version, a Mexican dish, and I've toggled on mobile priority, which means that we're paying about $3 Canadian per gigabyte. And so far, the first six days, we used $14 worth of data. Um, so to me it's worth it to be able to connect once a day and uh, but still be able to unplug and be here out in the open ocean. It's been really nice to be able to download podcasts and books because we've been flying through the podcasts 
It's nice to have the variety, connect with loved ones. And yeah, Starlink's been working really awesome. But it is 12 o'clock and I've been doing daily 12 o'clock um, chart plotting. So I'm gonna go do that now. Six down. It's a pale or golden beverage, which is I thought that'd be beer. beer. Or ale. But it's one, two, three, four, which matches with beer, but I must have a mistake here then. Okay. Ever since we lost about half our tank on the first few days, we've been making at least a jerry can, sometimes two jerry cans a day from our water maker. We've got a Katadin 80E. It makes about a jerry can in an hour, so five gallons in an hour at least. This is pretty slow going, but it does work and we've been very grateful for it because otherwise we would have had to turn around. We have the tank back up to three quarters which is at a good safety margin. Now means we can shower and even do some laundry knowing that we've got lots in reserve. The winds really picked up, steadied out this afternoon, which means we've been really flying along nicely. We're currently averaging just over six knots right now and the sea state hasn't built up too much. So it's pretty ideal. I'm hoping this lasts into the night, but it's been dying off every evening around uh, 10, 10 o'clock, and then it just kind of dies off completely. modest meal of some sausages and we already had some potatoes cooked up and the green beans really need to get used. Um, last night I made way too much food so we're just doing a little bit. <sighs> it's getting bumpier out now. We've done pretty much like 950 nautical miles, not in a straight line. Not as, as yeah. Line. Yeah. And just don't. Like tomorrow will be a thousand miles. But yeah. the straight line is about just under enough. Just over 800. Yeah.
Okay, it's day 23 at sea. It's been over three weeks now. And last night was definitely our worst night. Um, we had 20 to 25 and really uncomfortable rolly seas. Unfortunately, we have to be on this tack for three more days. And why that's unfortunate is Two days ago on deck inspections, I actually found two strands in the starboard lower shroud to be snapped. Um, this boat is has really heavy rigging, heavy size, but light rigging as far as um, how many shrouds it has. So there's one lower, one upper, one backstay, and one run in backstay, and then two forward stays. Um, the lower is quite large, um, I forget what size it is right now, but it is 19 strand, so 2 out of 19 are broken, which means it's operating at 90% right now. So we've tied a halyard to it and tensioned it, and then once the seas have calmed down, we will be going up the mast and doing a lashing. But right now the goal is just to be as less stress on the rig as possible right now, while, but still keep moving, um, which means that we're going pretty slow, but we're just trying to be comfortable and trying to just get to this high pressure system safely. Because after that we should be on a starboard tack the whole way back. and then that side of the rig is not being stressed. But a port tack. We'll be on a port tack the whole way back. So it'll be no stress or a lot less stress to the starboard side. It's very disconcerting because um, it's a year ago yesterday that we got a full re-rig re done. And we're not exactly rich, but it was one thing we wanted to make sure we spent lots of money on and not cutting corners. So we replaced all chain plates and all running rigging. And so the fact that it's a year old and this has happened is pretty disconcerting. But we've got a couple more days on this tack and then I will feel a lot better switching tacks. And then we'll have about 12 more days-ish. Um, back home and I can't wait to get to the dock now.
24 today. It is the day of squalls. It's been a really uncomfortable day and the winds have picked up like crazy in the squalls. So we haven't really been able to do much, just kind of surviving through it. And tomorrow should be a lot calmer. So the barometer's up to 1028 and we'll be approaching the high really quick late tomorrow and early the next day. But yeah, really looking forward to being done with the day. Oh my god. I am at the spreader right now, about to lash um, a makeshift shroud with a piece of Dyneema shackle and uh, an old outhaul line that we're going to lash down and tighten up so that we have a backup shroud. Now it's about five days since we spotted the br broken strands and the seas are finally calm enough and even in this calm I am hanging on for dear life up here. So I'm gonna get this done. <laughs> it's got a Dyneema shackle through the eye of a splice, through the top of the tang mass here. And now that line's gonna get tensioned down to the bottom of underneath the turnbuckle, the threaded part. And yeah, I'm done up here. Let's get down. <laughs> I think I'll be, it'll be worth it to have that. On the blue and white? Okay, but a bit more. Oh. So the idea is, I'm gonna go back to the big winch. Yep. Cinch that up and then let's see what we're gonna do for the lashing. How is that gonna so work? So I'll do a I... rolling hitch here. Rolling hitch. If we do a rolling hitch. We can't do back, we can't go back and back and back. No, we can't, unless we use another line for that purpose. Yeah. In which case we'd want a, a loop up here, wouldn't we? Yeah. This is the longest we've been just kind of stationary. <laughs> Right, yeah. I still think it would be better to go on. I just had another idea I want to try. Okay. You want to just grab with the soft shackle on the uh, yeah, screw? Yeah, to, to like, yeah. to Prussic style it, to take a loop. It has a loop and then just have to. Through here, so we're doubled and then go back to the um, winch. Okay. Would that work, or do I need to go through the bottom I again? I think you should go through the bottom. Okay, go up there now. That's what's tremendous pressure down now. How does it feel up there? Mm, still a little loose. Okay, we're going to give this weird system a try. See if there's enough tension. It doesn't have to have all of the tension, but it needs to share the load. Yeah, we've got a little more. That's good. It's pushing us along nice now. What day is it? Friday. We're at the fourth week. Friday the 24th, is it? Day 28. Day 20, oh, day 28 of the journey, yes. Yeah. I think it's the 24th. I think so. No, 23rd. 23rd? Yeah. Oh, good. We got yeah, <laughs> we gained the day. Yeah. <laughs> the wind's finally eased off. It's gonna push us east tonight. And then we've got a motor through a high again. So just getting through this. 
But we made some good northing today, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, we did. We got a fish, I think. Let's see what it is. Long tail. I think it might not be a fish. <laughs> Heavy one. Got treasure. Wow. Yeah, a big catch. <laughs> It's dead calm and we now want to save some fuel and save our time just waiting for the system off Vancouver Island to blow out. So we're just drifting here for the night. We're gonna go both go to bed and check, set the alarm every couple hours. It's day 34, the June 29th. We've just broken latitude 40, what was it, 42? 43. Oh. We've just broken latitude 43, so only, what is it, about 47? 48. Only a few more degrees of latitude to go before we're in line with Juan de Fuca. We're still pretty far west, but um, we need to hold off for this system coming in. It's going to be 25 to 30 knots off Vancouver Island, so we can't really head in yet. And the wind's been really finicky. We've been dancing around highs and having to motor some. And just last night we just waited and flopped around all night. So it's been a little bit frustrating and not so sure what to do with sometimes. But tonight's going to be a good night of sailing. We've got the jib pulled out and we're running straight downwind. So it's nice, nice motion. And we'll get some distance north in. We're about to lose our wind for the day. We've got maybe an hour or two more of sailing. So I'm gonna put some more headsail out and see if we can power up here for the last hour or two. Let's do it. Water has changed color overnight. It's gone to more of a greeny blue. It's been so, so blue up until this point, so it's kind of strange. Don't know if it's from the rain or if it's actually from being this far north now. We're now at 44 degrees latitude. Today's update is that we got the wind that we were expecting today. Yesterday we did not. And we're just cruising along four to five knots wing on wing right now, which is our last bit of like true northing. In, and we're gonna be heading east as of tomorrow and get a lot of east, 600 miles of easting in. Um, but yeah, we're down to our last week here. And yesterday was a bit of a tough one because we started heading northwest, which is hard to handle when you want to go east, northeast. But that's sailing for you. You don't always go the direction you want to go.
the wind's not always where you think it's going to be from. But at least today it is, and that feels good. It's time to switch tacks. We're going from a wing on wing to kind of more of a broad to beam reach. And we're going to start inching our way east now. It's kind of a momentous moment here. So we're headed home. We are expecting some 20 to 25 knot winds Wednesday, Thursday, as we come barreling into Vancouver Island, the Juan de Fuca Strait. So we've just taken, we've just taken our bimini down. Uh, the last stronger winds we were in, the 25 knots that one night with the gusts, really strong squalls. Um, the bimini looked like it was gonna just rip off. So we've taken that down, stored those solar panels. We've still got 500 watts of solar working and pickled the water maker. And now we're on the countdown to getting into getting home. So it's kind of nice to get those jobs done. And now we just focus on sailing home. Oh my God. We're in a cloud. There's some dull porpoises around, but they're not too many. Of course they come to the bow and they disappear. We're in a fog. There's a freighter two miles behind us. We cannot see him. He had to alter course for us. And yeah, now there's Dolph Porpoise, which means we're close to land. Well, closer. And I caught a tuna this morning. I saw a piece of bulk kelp, which definitely means we're close to land. Even though we're 500 miles from the Juan de Fuca, we're actually closer to Haida Gwaii right now. Um, 300 miles about. So yeah, it really feels like we're almost there now. We are preparing for higher winds. It's about 14 knots now, and it's only gonna increase to about 20, gusting to 25 over the next uh, two days here. And then we'll be on home stretch a few more days after that. Good morning. It is Wednesday morning, day 40, and this was the first night of high winds. So we've survived the first night. It's definitely uncomfortable. My body hurts. My muscles are achy. And I keep getting a little bit queasy, but not too bad. And yeah, I'm just gonna go out into the cockpit and take a look around. I haven't really looked around for a while and fill up the water the kettle with the jerry can and just make sure everything looks good out there should really switch the monitor blade to to the blue one the smaller blade um yeah it's gonna be a long day but that's okay he'll do the kettle first and then i'll get you to pass the the blade to me. Sure. <laughs> that kettle's so cool. That one came from spray, actually.
feels good to have a bit of fresh air. Oh, nice to see it brighter though. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes, I do have to pull it. We're finally on the tail end of the wind, so I'm going to try and put just the tiniest bit of mane up. And then, as it dies, we're just going to keep putting a little bit more canvas up until we're rocketing towards the Wanda Pika. But this is just the start, so we can't get too excited. and I thought maybe it was clouds but the clouds are clearing and we see a peak of a mountain in the distance. I did not think we would see it today so it's pretty cool. It's about 50 miles to shore there. Say again? It's about 50 miles from the boat to shore so it's a long ways so it has to be pretty tall mountains to see them. <laughs> We are about to cross the continental shelf and we should be able to get depth reading pretty soon. Well, definitely by the, in the morning. And uh, we've seen so many whales today. Had a pod of 200 dolphins plus join us. And there's just been so much life. So many boats, freighters coming out of the Juan de Fuca. So it feels really cool. All of a sudden we're surrounded by, by life again. Well, this is where things get exciting. It's, I don't even know, it's like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Our last night at sea, and we're not even really at sea anymore. We're coming into the Wanda Fuca, and I've got to cross the shipping lane twice because I'm trying to do the shortest path. Um, and we've got a ship coming in that's going to be really tight. Um, within a mile or so of us. Uh, and he's only gonna be changing direction. So a little bit nervous because I'm basically right in the middle of the inbound and outbound right now. And within half an hour, um, me and Cape Henry, the cargo ship, are gonna be pretty close, but um, I can call him if needed. We'll, I'll wait a little bit longer 
but uh, I think I should be okay. I'll just be on the outskirt of the channel. And then by the time we pass it again, it'll be bright out, so I'll feel better about that. I should have filmed it, but I just called the cargo ship Cape Henry, and he adjusted his speed, but kept his course, and we are now well clear of him by over a knock mile, so. And I now see his starboard light more than his port, so that makes me feel better. It means that he's not coming straight at us. It's always better just to call. And often they like saying hi anyways. <laughs> well, we've made it into Canadian waters. We've just passed the shipping lane again. And we're on the Canadian side now. Um, it's pretty surreal. We can actually now see the trees and I just caught a whiff of, of land and it smells very, it smells like trees. It smells amazing. It smells like home. And we just saw some orca go by. Uh, there was no point filming it because they were pretty far away. But what a welcome home into Canada. It feels very Canadian right now and I love it. Very grateful to be here. But we are very low in fuel. Um, so we're making a little detour to Port Renfrew which has a little marina for sport fishermen and apparently there is a fuel dock there. So it is gonna delay us a little bit, but it'll delay us a lot if we run out of fuel and there's no wind still. It's supposed to pick up this afternoon, but we just don't wanna take that chance. So we're getting fuel. Ooh, we're already near the entrance. Yeah. Now let's get the pancakes made. Mmm, I just smell land. It smells like not the pancakes cooking? No, it smells like trees. Oh nice. It smells like I have my face uh, in a tree right now. Oh wow. Rainforest yeah. moss. Yeah. Nothing like we've smelled for a long time. We've got about 10 knots of wind behind us, but I do not want to be sailing at like three or four knots right now. Uh, I want to get back so bad, so we're motor sailing. I did put up the main and it's boosting us like half a knot, so I'll take that. Uh, we want to get in as soon as possible. Now that we know we're almost there, it's just whatever it takes, you know? Pedals in the metal.